Hi, I am Barbara Casadei, and I'm the current president of the European Society of Cardiology. And with me tonight is Dr. Alaide Kieffer, who is a member of the EAPCI and is an interventional cardiology on the front line in Milan. So everybody is concerned about uh, the uh, fate of uh, patients uh, with STEMI in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. I mean, do they get enough attention? Uh, are we prioritizing these patients the way we should? So in China, uh, they have already published that uh, uh, there were unacceptable delays in uh, uh, patients coming in with STEMI because uh, uh, of the current situation. Is it also happening in Italy or are you faring better in Italy? Thanks, Barbara. Uh, yes, unfortunately, also in uh, Lombardy region, where is located Milano, we are observing a significant delay. And uh, we try to identify the potential causes of the delay in order to try to overcome these important issues. The first point that we identified is that patients perceive hospital nowadays as places where they can be infected. And as a consequence, they do not call emergency number in Italy or they present to emergency room when it's late, even after days from symptom onset. The second potential cause is the increasing timing from the call of the patient to ambulance pickup. And this is due to the traffic of the calls to the emergency number and also because ambulances are busy with COVID-19 patient calls. Okay, so it is the same uh, as uh, China, and so we really need to uh, very much pay attention to that. And once they come to the hospital, uh, then how do you treat them? How do you manage these patients? Because they will be different from the patients that normally come promptly, I expect, in a hospital such as yours. Yeah, in my hospital, when you do have uh, a steel elevation uh, in mice, uh, they go to the car lab. So mostly in my hospital, but this is the reality in my hospital. This is one of the hub that were identified by the region. So they go, if they have a steel elevation in my direct to the car lab. However, we try to collaborate with the other centers uh, in the Milano region and in Lombardy. And uh, we called uh, all the different spoke hospitals and hubs and tried to merge our data to try to understand something uh, of this uh, very unexpected situation. And from an initial analysis that we did of the first 33 patients with COVID-19 undergoing uh, urgent coronal angiography, we did see that all patients had ischemic AKG, AKC changes with mostly ST elevation. In 45% of them, they had ST elevation. Troponin was elevated in the majority, and also all had alteration of left ventricular kinesis. Most of them, 60% had LVF less than 50. Majority underwent invasive coronary angiography. There were only three that in two different hospitals underwent to coronary a CT and geography. But what was most important in this patient, uh, clearly we collected patient only having a diagnosis of COVID-19. Most of the patients, 60% of them, did not have a carpal lesion requiring treatment, so they did not have obstructive coronary artery disease. And this is not what you would normally see, would you? No, clearly not. Okay, That's so quite typical of COVID-19 patients. Uh, the the, the uh, clinical uh, picture in some respect. Right. And so, you know, because, uh, again, another common concern of the cardiologists now is that uh, uh, the cardiology wards and everything will be 
uh, taken and dedicated to patients uh, for COVID-19. And everybody's talking about reorganization and uh, as a fluid things, you know, maybe today is one way, tomorrow maybe something different. So what have you actually done? Have you, is there any advice that you can give to other centers on, on how to do this in a way that uh, allows you to work and do your work properly? and, uh, and uh, it's good for the patients. So in our region, in Lombardy, it was decided to reorganize completely the STEMI networks and the network of hub and spoke hospital for cardiovascular emergency. So just to give you an idea from 55 center that had the 24 hours capability for primary PCI, now we are reduced to 13. The hub has to have at least one collab, more than one collab, because one collab has to be dedicated for suspected or diagnosed COVID-19. And they need to have a dedicated internal path. So we have triage dedicated for cardiovascular emergency that is managed in my hospital by cardiologists. And they have dedicated intensive unit care as well then dedicated words, then they will go and be transferred after intensive unit care. And new procedure and protocols in car labs have been also promoted because it's important to have safe hospital for patients, but also for healthcare providers. And our national society give us a checklist of donning and offing procedure and exactly what to do in the car lab before the patient arrival, during intervention procedure, and after. And clearly, in case of ST elevation MI, all patients have to be treated as a suspected COVID-19 patient. Yeah, no, that, that's good. Thank you very much. But in, in these times where, you know, everybody's arriving late, uh, are we still, do you still recommend that we do, we wait for primary PCI rather than, say, do thrombolysis in the ambulance? No, I, I think that we don't have to forget uh, which are uh, the ESC guidelines that should really drive our decision making. Uh, primary PCI remains the perfusion therapy of choice if feasible within a time frame that is recommended by ESC guidelines and performed in facilities that are approved for the treatment of COVID-19 patients. The thrombolysis and fibrinolysis should be considered only in the case that the target time cannot be met. So if by any chance the patients are transferred not to the half hospital, but they self-present, because this can happen, to hospital that are not hub, so they are not organized for COVID-19. And these hospital have not the capability to transfer the patient within the timeline that are recommended by ESC. In all the other cases, this is primary PCI. We arrived to that after so many paper research and we don't have to forget it. Uh, an important point, uh, again, that I would like to stress is that because the test results are not immediately available in the STEMI patient, any STEMI patient should be managed assuming it was positive for COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And what about the uh, non-STEMI then? What do you do with the non-STEMI patients coming in? And so regarding the non-ST elevation MI, in my hospital, we follow this particular algorithm. We look to the clinical stability of the patient. So we propose a paradigm shift from early invasive to a conservative strategy with optimal medical therapy, electrocardiographic and troponin monitoring, and coronary CT scan. If they present with non-ST elevation MI and they are clinical stable, and this stability is what is defined again in ESC guidelines. Indeed, if the patients are presenting with non-ST elevation MI and they are clinically unstable, again, according to definition of ESC guidelines, at the admission or during the clinical observation, there is an indication for immediate and early invasive management. And again, they have to be treated like anybody's COVID-19 if they go to immediate call or 
clearly if it's not immediate and is early or uh, is an early call-up, these uh, they have the time to be tested for COVID-19. I mean, what, what is your experience of treating uh, uh, patients who have acute coronary syndrome and also uh, severe lung problems? I mean, do you, when do you draw a line, essentially? I mean, uh, luckily, this is not my decision. Being the professional cardiologist, the intensivist, and an anesthesiologist decision, I have to say, I don't think this is an easy time for them, honestly. They have all my respect. Because even if in my hospital, where we have six intensive unit care, we were able to build a new intensive unit care from a corridor. And now, thanks to the donation, and I want to thank all the donors, we were able to build a tent structure with new 12 uh, beds. But again, despite all these numbers of intensive unit cares and most of them dedicated them, we have 300 patients COVID-19 in my hospital. They still, the anesthesiologists have to take this very complex decision. I think the decision making is the decision making they are doing in their everyday life. Clearly you intubate patients that can be exubated. I mean, it's the same uh, algorithm they are using. Yeah, not correct. So, what are your take on what is your take on message for uh, our audience and all the people who are anxiously preparing to deal with these uh, double problems? I mean, at first, actually, nobody will be prepared of what you are going to see. I have to say, it was completely unexpected. Uh, and it's uh, something that, like a tsunami coming to your life. However, we are doctors who are used to have to take decision and be really clear in our mind. First, make your hospital safe for SES patients. So design a dedicated triage, design dedicated pack and dedicated wards for these patients, but make your hospital safe also for healthcare providers. That's very important. So if you're going to be and hub for cardiovascular emergency, you need to be to have uh, and to provide to your healthcare providers all the capabilities and uh, structure. They have to have mask. They have to have uh, dedicated mask. They have to have uh, all the equipment that are needed to keep them safe. And this is really a prey for all administrators. I mean, we are in front line, we want to fight, but we have to do it safe for us and for our patients. Then raise awareness that patients with chest pain need to call the emergency number as soon as possible and come to the hospital because we are giving a wrong message. Clearly, they don't have to come by themselves to self-presenting to hospital, but they don't have to be afraid to call us if they have chest pain. We cannot forget all the fights that we have been doing for so many years and the evidence that we got. And clearly, last but is not last, don't forget ask guidelines. So provide your patient recommendation but ask guidelines in a safer place and in a safer way. Yes, fantastic. And I, I would probably add to our administrations that we can get these patients uh, uh, out of the hospital very rapidly if we are if the patient presents early and we can deal with them effectively. So you know we we can free bed, we can save lives, and we can actually also save money. And I think that is also an argument. So thank you very much, Alida. That it was great to talk to you. Thank you for your advice and stay safe. You too. Bye bye everybody. Bye -bye.